you done now? Broadcasting live from Houston, Texas, and around the world. And around the world. TV host, best-selling author, and radio personality Brad Gilmore brings you a collection of conversations with stars from movies. Mark Wahlberg. Hey, how are you? The legendary Mr. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Great <laughs> introduction. Television. Jimmy Fallon joins us this morning. Jimmy, how you doing, my friend? Good morning. Thank you so much, Brad, for having me. I appreciate this, bud. Kelly Ripa. Brad, thank you for having me. Comedy. Jay Leno joins us. Jay, how you doing? Hey, Brad, what's going on? Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. Good morning. Music. Lola Monroe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Grammy Award winner Maya joins us. How are you? And more. And more. This is is The the collection. Collection. Now your host, The the Boat. Brad Gilmore. Thank you, Keith, and welcome everyone to the collection. My name is the boat, Brad Gilmore. So excited that you join us for another episode of the show. If this is your first time checking us out, welcome. Welcome to the collection. This is literally, like they say in the intro, a collection of my favorite conversations with entertainers throughout the landscape, whether that's you know, comedy, music, movies, television, film, sports, wherever. We have them here on The Collection, and today is no different. Really excited to get to our guest today, but I want to remind everyone, if you're checking this out and you haven't left us a rating or a review in your favorite podcast app, go ahead and do so. It really helps us over here at The Collection. This week, just as all weeks, we are entertaining you with three brand new interviews, and this one is one that I'm sure you're all going to love. Let's find out who we're talking to this week on The Collection. I recognize Tia Carrera from many projects that she was involved with, especially in the early to late 90s and even in the mid 2000s. She got her big break by being on General Hospital after somebody saw her at a Waikiki grocery store and thought that she might have what it takes to be an actress. When moving to Los Angeles and doing the soap, she then got the biggest break of all, playing the character of Cassandra in Wayne's World. From there on, she went to do True Lies with James Cameron and Arnold Schwarzenegger, all the way to doing a television show that I love and I'm going to talk to her a lot about, which is Relic Hunter. And since those times, she has continued to be a working actress and continue to put out projects that are near and dear to her heart and entertain the audiences worldwide. And I'm so excited to talk to her today. We're talking about A Big Fat Family Christmas, which is a new Christmas movie coming out where? On Hallmark, of course. They're the kings and queens of Christmas around this time. And uh, we're going to talk to her about that. We're going to talk about working with Sean Connery, that show Relic Hunter that I love so much. It was such a pleasure to talk to Tia Carrera. And she's also done stuff like Lilo and Stitch. I believe she was the only uh, lead who are only actress who did the lead voice in a Disney movie while at the same time doing the cover of Playboy magazine. So without further ado, let's get to my interview with Tia Carrera. And she joins me now. Tia, how are we doing? I'm very well. Thank you. I uh, should have my earphones on. I'm just talking to you yelling in the dining room of my house. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful dining room. I love your tree. And um, you. we're here talking about a big fat family Christmas as it's going to be on Hallmark this Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific and Eastern time. Talk to me about it because everyone loves a Christmas movie. Everyone loves the Hallmark Christmas movies. Uh, what about this story drew you to it specifically, though? Um, Well, it's a different character. You know, uh, I have always played like the vixen, the bad girl, the, you know, whatever, sexy girl. So to play the mom with a cutting, biting, acerbic wit, which is, you know, closer to what I am. You know, I've got a a teenage daughter also. So it was kind of fun to get to play that disapproving mom that gets in the way, you know, and really kind of pushing her daughter towards the boy. It was hilarious. So as far as Christmas goes, I see you already have the tree in the background. Do you have, <laughs> do you have, uh, you know, Christmas traditions that you, that you stick to year over year with the family? 
Um, always trying to just spend time with the family, but I do have a, a wooden puzzle behind me on the table that I realized, you know, cause I don't really have, um, traditions per se. Um, but I always pull out this wooden puzzle that I got at my daughter's preschool, um, and disassemble it and put it back together. And I have all the same commemorative, um, you know, ornaments for the tree. Um, so I have like this, that's a ceremony of unpacking Christmas and putting it up, but you know, it, it, it's always the same. I'm always playing white lights, you know, and the same ornaments and some picture ornaments from every year of my daughter. So, you know, stuff like that. Um, we're talking about a big fat family Christmas. Again, it's going to be on Hallmark this Friday. When you, you said that when you saw this character, it's the mom, it's something different than you've done before. Um, and you kind of related to it because it's more of your actual person, closer to your real personality. What do you look for, like in a script or a story when you get it? Do you look for something you can connect to or do you look for, man, this would be fun to do? Um, it just depends, you know, I mean, if it's a heavy drama or it's a comedy, it just, it's there are different things that you look for in each script. Um, but mostly it's the character that either I think I can do a job, good job at or not. You know, do I believe myself saying those words? Um, you know, I've gotten some scripts that I thought, oh, you know, this would be great for somebody, but this doesn't feel right for me. Uh, and it's, it's just that that thing that you just go, well, can I stretch that far? Can I do a good job, make it believable? And this this uh, film, first of all, being an all Asian cast right. was fantastic to be a part of um, because to see diversity on Hallmark is huge. Um, you know, not so many years ago, you wouldn't see somebody like me on there. You wouldn't see a family that looks like us on there. So I think it's fantastic that Hallmark is reflecting the people that go into their stores and buy their stuff like me. I've gone in and, you know, bought trinkets and, you know, gifts and greeting cards, of course. So um, it's nice that um, Hallmark is valuing us as, 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 you know, a part of their family and sharing our family stories. I think it's great. I mean, earlier this year, you you were part of Easter Sunday, too. I mean, you're kind of cornering now the market on the holiday themed uh, <laughs> project. And the disapproving mom or aunt or whatever I am. You know, it, you know, when you're a woman of a certain age in Hollywood, I mean, like, look, I don't look like I look in the movie. Um, but that's too bad. This isn't going to be broadcast. But, um, you know, it's kind of funny. It, it, it's 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 a thing of you're between being like, you know, the, the young love interest, but you're not quite, you know, like the dowdy old mom or grandma. Um, you know, I always said rock and mom, not soccer mom. And I still hold to that in my own life, but in, in film and television, you do kind of have to go, okay, it's, I'm going to put my hair up in a bun and I'm going to be, you know, a little disapproving and a little grumpy or whatever it is, because there are those tropes. There are those cliche characters that you sometimes have to dig into. And it's, it's a, it's a, not that this is a cliche, but I'm just saying, you know, that that image of like, where am I? I'm somewhere in between, but I'm going to emphasize more in that direction just for comic effect. Well, sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, when, when you talk about the tropes and, and knowing, you know, where I guess your role is in the story and, and how to help the story go forward. Um, sometimes you got to be the disapproving mom, even though you're the rocking yeah. mom. We're the rocking yeah. mom right now. If people can see Tia Guerrero right now. I don't know what you're talking about. You, you haven't aged a day. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe I should take a picture of this and, and put it onto my Instagram to be like, okay, so uh, I, I'm, I'm sort of like that here. Okay, wait, where are we? I don't want go. to be showing all my apps and stuff. Ooh. <laughs> look at that. You look great. I mean, obviously, you look great. We just took a picture together. This is this is. You a, take a picture. We're going to post it. Please and then do. I'll post at, you have to tell me what the at and the hashtag and all that stuff are. We'll do it. Um, you know, but you, what, what's crazy is I, I was doing some research on you and you got spotted in a grocery store in Waikiki, a Waikiki grocery store. Is that correct? Yeah, that is the truth. I know it sounds like a um, Lana Turner story, which is what uh, people always said when I first moved out here. And I told them that I'm like, no, it's the truth. It's not a, you know, concoction of some publicist. I was walking in the grocery store after a photo shoot, after a modeling shoot. Yes, I was wearing full makeup. I had a garland of flowers around my head and I was wearing a bikini. So there was that. You might have drawn like a <laughs> the attention of a couple of people, just like one or 
two might have stopped and said, wait, hold on. Let me let me let me try to offer this woman something right now. <laughs> Fortunately, it was, you know, a, a mother and father to the producer of the film. So there was nothing unsavory right. and creepy going on with it, even though I happened to be walking around in that particular <laughs> garb um but they said oh darling you're gorgeous my son's doing a movie here you'd be perfect for the female lead i'm looking around like who me uh i had never done any acting before that i was a singer so i you know sang in all the talent contests i performed at the you know the waikiki shell with um you know with uh my high school you know talent show act um but it was uh the the move it was a meeting, a chance meeting in a grocery store that changed my life forever. Yeah, it's incredible. I went to, by the way, Hawaii, an incredible place. I went there for my honeymoon this year for the first time. Oh, wonderful. To, Which island? To Kauai. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the cool place people are going now. But um, Oahu is where I'm from, Honolulu, the big city. Yeah, the, the big city. We got to go there the next time. So you you come mm -hmm. from Hawaii to Los Angeles, you start doing big roles. I wanted to ask you about one thing, though, in particular. Obviously, you know, you did movies like Wayne's World and, and True Lies. And in True Lies, you play this antiquities dealer, right? And I want to... Basically, you know, a salesperson to the terrorists in the movie. <laughs> but, 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 like, you had, like, these ancient artifacts and stuff. And the reason I ask you this is because one of my favorite shows of all time, and I'm not lying, I could show you my Amazon Prime to prove it, is Relic Hunter. I... Oh. Oh, that's awesome. I loved Relic Hunter, man. I loved it, loved it, loved it. It was great. And it's still on Amazon, I think, now. Yeah, I watch it all the time. And so you played Sydney Fox, who was a, and she was a Relic Hunter. I mean, you look for these great <laughs> antiquities, but you also taught at a at a university. And this is mm -hmm. before, I, I'm Tomb bringing, Raider. It's before Tomb Raider. That's what I was about to bring up. This is 99. You kind of set the standard. There wasn't a woman out on television or movies at that time. And really, even today, who was that intellectual badass that you got to play? I love that character. And um, I think we could probably do it again today with maybe some younger people that I'm mentoring. I'm teaching them. I'm like the Obi-Wan Kenobi of the <laughs> Relic Hunters. Maybe I could drop in like Harrison Ford. You know, he still goes out there. I mean, he might dislocate his shoulder. but <laughs> He uh, might crash you know. a plane every now and then. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, I think it could be a cool thing today with another you know group of people. I mean, you had National Treasure, you had the librarian, but Relic Hunter Sydney Fox was sexy. She was kick ass. She was smart as hell and uh, got uh, Nigel out of more than a few scrapes. I mean, he was the damsel in distress, which is what I loved about the part. It, it was great. It was really you took the the Indiana Jones kind of character, but flipped it around so that the 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 femme fatale. Uh, or the damsel, as you said, was now the, the lead and the protagonist. The guy, yeah, yeah. The guy was the damsel in distress often. So he always got himself into these funny scenarios where, you know, I have to figure out, how did you get into the situation, Nigel? All right, turn around, twist this way, you know, turn that <laughs> knob that way, and, and we'll escape from this, you know, tomb of death. Now, obviously, I mean, you're an actress, so you're, 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 you memorize dialogue. It's what you do and deliver it convincingly. But there was so much history that you had to an exposition and explaining what the significance of this and that and the other was that ever difficult to nail oh yeah it was hard i mean there were more than a few speeches that i had to go okay there's dates there's names there's locations i'm like oh and then when i had to you know figure out a puzzle on top of that it was a lot of uh it was a lot of doing so sort of like patting my head and rubbing my stomach at the same time and i was like wait okay sorry but fortunately i have a pretty good memory i mean i've i've got a great memory for getting dialogue in the moment ask me what i had for dinner you know two nights ago i couldn't tell you yeah, well, you did it convincingly. I think Sydney Fox, underrated character in, in TV history, and I would oh, love, thank you. I would love was, for them to bring that show back. I would. Yeah, I think it was great. It's still a great show for young women. I get told at like these, you know, where I go sign autographs mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, girls saying, "Hey, I became an archaeologist because of you. I got into whatever. Uh, I forget all these different bizarre things where I thought, wow, that's interesting that this character." in a comic way, lighthearted fun, inspired this young woman to go into this field that, you know, you know, you would never have thought of. Yeah. Wow. That's great. I love that, that people actually are still going to the show and being inspired by it because I always yeah. loved it. I mean, seriously, yeah. always one of my favorites. Um, 
We're talking again about a big fat family Christmas. It's going to be on Hallmark December the 2nd at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific time. So make sure you it's check Friday. it out this Friday. Set the DVRs. Um, just can you confirm an internet rumor for me, though? Did you? I don't know. <laughs> did you actually turn down a role in Baywatch? Was this offered to you? Yes, it was true. It's true. Um, it was right at the same time as as um, uh, Wayne's World, and I was dragging my feet. And I had only just gone in for Wayne's World, and I kept telling my agent hold off, hold off, you know, throw up roadblocks and stall this until we find out about Wayne's World because I read that script. I'm like, there's nobody that can rock like that, kick ass like that, you know, be funny like that. I couldn't think, I mean, there was, on one hand, I could count the girls that I saw in auditions back then. Um, and nobody could, you know, cause I was in a rock band in junior high and high school. And, you know, I had done martial arts uh, for, you know, in class and, for lots of shows up until that point. So I just thought all those different things and the comedy, it's, I'm going to get this. Oh, it will be mine. Oh yes, it will be mine. But it was a lot of just really stalling and I wasn't available for the swimming test for the, (laughs) you know, whatever to, you know, the training sessions with the, you know, whatever. So I feel bad, but um, you know, People do that all the time when they're negotiating deals. Well, it worked out definitely in your favor. And Mike Myers. Yeah, thank God. I could have lost both. Oh, my gosh. And in the breakdown for Cassandra, it specifically said an Asian woman, right? Mm-hmm. Did you 18, ever figure out why that was the. 18 to 25, something like that, or 18 to 23. Um, uh, speaks with a heavy Cantonese accent. But um, when she sings rock and roll, she sounds like Pat Benatar or something like that. Um you know, martial arts, uh, tough girl, doesn't take any um, grief off of anybody, you know, so it was very specific. The part was written for you and it was it was incredible. Um, I'm glad they wrote it that way. Otherwise, you know, Cameron Diaz could have been cast in the part of Cassandra. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Um, you worked with Sean Connery, who's one of my all time favorites. Oh, man, the, Sean Connery. The best James Bond still today. I think they've all done great, but he's the best at it. Um, yeah, he, he, yeah. You said one time he gave you a piece of advice that you still stick to today, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very simple. But he's like, when you walk into a room with your head held high and your shoulders thrown back, you look like you belong. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's like That's if you my act Sean like Carter you're there. impression. I sound nothing like him, but <laughs> it's my feeble attempt. If I closed my eyes, I heard... <laughs> The late, great Sean Connery. Um, oh, man, he was awesome. He was great. When he walked into the room, it was like a legend walked into the room. Harvey Keitel, Steve Buscemi, Phil Kaufman, you know, from the director from All the Right Stuff. He, we're all talking and laughing around the table. The door opens. Sean walks in and silence. Like that reverie, that like revered, you know, legend walks into the room and everybody just stopped. And he said something funny and walked in and then we we're back to it. But it was it was quite something being in the presence of someone like that. Do you have like the moment where you're acting with him or you're on the set with him and you're like, wow, I cannot screw this up. Like this is this is Sean Connery. I don't know what he's how he's going to act if I mess these lines up. No, he was he was a gas to work with. He oh, was really? so funny and so friendly and kind. And he was always singing like these, I don't know, shanty songs or whatever. And I'm like, Sean, could you sing something from this century so that I would, you know, know the lyrics? And he was, oh, but I, I'll never forget when I first walked up to him, I was like, oh, hello, Mr. Connery. I'm Tia Carrere and I'm I'm playing the part of Jingo. And he goes, of course you are. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I'm just going to going to curl into a ball and sit in the corner here because of course I am. I'm an idiot. You're a big star. I'm, I'm a loser. I'm going to sit over here. I'm sorry. That was the dumbest thing I ever said. <laughs> no, no, but that's the great response because that's what he says. Of course you are. That's what he says on the plane to, uh, to pussy galore, right? Where she says, my name's pussy galore. He goes, Oh, but of course you are. I think, Oh no, he says, I must be dreaming. Never mind. I got that wrong. I, forget. I don't know. Something anyway. like that. It's still Ooh, great. My mind. It's still Ooh, great my to mind. work with Sean. Uh, a big fat family Christmas um, again is going to be on the Hallmark Channel December second at eight p.m. Eastern and Pacific time. Make sure you set your DVRs. If you can't see it, 
Um, again, Christmas season. Are we we're staying in town? Obviously, or do we have any big Christmas plans? Season. It's already Christmas season at my house. Do we have any big plans? Like, are we going anywhere? Because I know your family lives all around, like in Guam and American Samoa and Phoenix. <laughs> and, all over the place. Right? Um, well, I might have some family coming in from Arizona. Uh, I, they, they've said as much, but they're, they, I don't know, they haven't completely fully committed. So we're going to have to get takeout food because I'm not ready for them unless they tell me. <laughs> this is a hint. You in Arizona, if you're showing up, tell me ahead of time. Are you going to go hungry? <laughs> <laughs> well, why should people go out and watch A Big Fat Family Christmas? Give them the pitch. Why should we watch this movie on Hallmark as a family on Friday? I think people should watch A Big Fat Family Christmas because it's so much fun and such good vibes and a laugh and a gas. And if you remember when you first fell in love and you had a disapproving or pushy parent, you know, conversely, um, you are going to see yourself in this movie. It's It's so much fun. Oh, well, I can't wait to see it. And thank you, Tia, for joining me and talking a little bit. We could talk more. I'm going to be rooting for the Relic Hunter reboot. Let's get that in motion. Let's do yeah, let's funding. Start a petition. Let's, let's start a petition. <laughs> let's figure out how we can do it because that would make all of my dreams come true. And it was great. Hashtag talking. Relic Hunter Redux. Re Re Relic Hunter Redux. We're going to start it right now on the show. Uh, Tia Carrera, thank you just so much for taking the time today. Thank you. Party on. <laughs>